Hey guys, welcome back to the Hump Day Hangover. This week we're going to take a look at a local brewery, Fall City Brewery. And we're also going to be compiling a list of 10 pay-per-views that we like. Uh, we're going to put a poll up on Facebook and we're going to let you guys choose which one you want us to watch for an upcoming episode. We're also going to talk a little bit about the Delta Plus variant. What is that? Oh, it's a new strain. Oh, dude, speaking of new strains, I just got this new one it's called Purple Urkel. Woo! My God, it is fire. No, I mean, no, it's a, it's a COVID-19 strain. COVID-19? Yeah. Bro, it's 2021. I'm gonna give a fuck about that shit no more. <laughs> So in case you haven't been watching the news, it looks like uh, COVID-19 is taking over the world again. New Delta variant. Very dangerous. Yeah, nobody cares. In other news. Nobody cares. Um, so yeah, in other news, the woman that qualified first for the Olympics in the 100 meters is disqualified because uh, she tested positive for THC. Yeah. Marijuana. Yeah, apparently she'd been... Uh on a bit of the reefer. Speaking of nobody cares. I, yeah, I didn't think I'm anybody sorry, cared I, about that anymore either. No, I didn't think anybody cared about, you know, oh, wow, you you smoke weed. I'll be honest with you. The fact that she smokes weed and is the fastest woman in the world, I think is even more impressive. Dude, I'm saying, right? Like uh, Michael Phelps? Yeah. Last thing I'm doing is smoking weed and then going and fucking sprinting. <laughs> right. Get out of here. These people out here taking bong rips and then going and fucking setting world records. I mean, shit, that's yeah. impressive. And people want to know, we're going to disqualify her. And, like, the thing that kills me is, you know, is how fast people dug into her past comments on, like, Twitter and things, you know, from back when she was, like, 15 years old. So, basically, she was a fucking child still. And we're like, oh, look at this, man. She said some, uh, she said some anti-LGBTQ comments, you know, and things like that, of that nature. It's so, like, so, fuck her. We're glad she lost. See... Everybody said some dumb shit when they were 15. And you hate the excuse, it was a different world then. Yeah. But it always is, right? And when you're 15, you're much more susceptible to society's overarching view, right? Yeah. Like, if you're 15 years old and you're listening to a lot of rap music, a lot of hip-hop, and they have an anti-LGBT stance, you're not really going to question that. you got to no. grow up a little bit before you start questioning that. Yeah. So, I mean, and... When you're at that age, too, you're testing the waters, you're testing your boundaries, and you're actually, you know, you're filled with, like, teenage angst. It's a thing, you know? So, yeah. I mean, you got, like, rage. You're, like, rebelling against, oh, what's popular right now, or whatever's the thing. I'm going to go against it, you know? I'm going to say things just for the reaction. That's yeah. what fucking teenagers do. Yeah. You know, you're going to sit here and fucking hold somebody to something they said back when they were a child. It's like, how many of us are privileged enough to where we we don't have a record of the things that we said when we were kids because I'm pretty sure a lot of us would end up fucking getting canceled if we did. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It's, it's like, fucking ignorant. When I was in high school, not to completely age myself, but Facebook was pretty new. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty much it. Twitter came out right after I graduated, I believe. But now you look at, you know, Snapchat and Instagram and like, yeah, if that was out during high school years, people would be in trouble 24-7. Dude. Ready to try some beer? I'm ready to try some beer. Are you ready? I think so. All right. We'll go with yes. No. All right, guys. So we're back. We got our Fall City beer here. Um, we got Hazy Hipster IPA, mm -hmm. Street Lamp Porter, and just a premium Pilsner. So uh, we're just going to sample these. While we do that, we're going to tell you about an upcoming episode and a poll that we're going to have for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically... We got 10 pay-per-views that we picked that are noteworthy for one reason or another. We're going to let you pick which one. We're going to watch it, react to it, 
We're also gonna have a drinking game. We don't have the exact rules of the drinking game lined up because it depends on what era and what right, company. Yeah. So like a couple of the ideas that we ran through is, you know, like manager gets involved, finish your drink, you know, referee gets knocked out, you know, take a drink. Yeah. You know, something something crazy like that, you know. And then some things that'll be dependent on company and era. Exactly, you know, like yeah. take a drink every time yeah. King says puppies or <laughs> Joey right. Styles says, Joey Styles oh, my says God. oh my God. Yeah, yeah exactly. So yeah. after we figure out which one we're watching, we'll set the rules more in stone. Yeah. But uh so yeah. Yeah. So you guys get to choose which one we're gonna watch. That's how we do engagement around here. So we're just gonna start with Pilsner. Because when I hear Pilsner, I think cheap beer. Yeah. I'm not saying this one's cheap. I'm saying when I hear Pilsner, I'm like, oh. Yeah, when you think of Pilsner, you just think of like some basic. And I mean, like the the packaging on this, I guess it kind of reminds me of like some almost old yeah. school 70s looking style. Yeah, it's like some retro. Yeah, it really is. I don't know. Budweiser, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I see it. I feel like I'm about to go hang out in somebody's old El Camino. And... All right, I'm not going ham on this. No. Mostly because it's a pilsner. It's very light. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, let's see. It's going to be very beery. <laughs> smell that, dude. It smells very beery. Mmm, that's... That's for shotgunning only. <laughs> <laughs> like... <clears throat> For a beer, it's not. I was going to say, it's drinkable. Yeah, it's drinkable. Maybe that's my evolution since we started doing this channel. I used to not be able to drink beer at all. No. This is drinkable. Yeah. I just prefer other beers. It's very light. Hey, it doesn't sit heavy or nothing. Yeah. It's. If you like beer, you'll like it. Yeah. Like me, if you're a beer person, yeah, this is you. To me, beer's just, you know, whatever. But right. Yeah, it's fine. All right. So the first on our list of pay per views, what we got? First one on the pay per view list is WrestleMania 14, which is noteworthy. Why? HBK versus Stone Cold. Mike Tyson is the referee. I mean, you got New Age Outlaws versus. Was it Cactus Jack and Chainsaw yeah. Charlie? That kind of put him on the map. Yeah. WWE on the map. That really was like the turning point for them against WCW in the ratings war. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure actually the next night is when uh, X-Pac debuted, came back to the company, and that was the first time in like 80-something weeks where they won the ratings war. Mike Tyson so. gave him a huge boost. Mike Tyson did. It's debatable if that's the beginning of the Attitude Era or the Montreal screw job, but... Either yeah. way, it's, it's yeah. classic. I feel like that was kind of like, see, for me, I feel like SummerSlam 97 kind of set in, kind of set the gears in motion for the Attitude Era. Yeah. You know, when Stone Cold got pile drive by Owen Hart, you know, and that whole kind of thing, and then Bad Blood came, where Kane debuted, and that was getting it going, but yeah, like WrestleMania 14 really, like, cemented it in. And, this is a side note, okay? Um, I always see these countdowns. Best debuts of all time. And almost every countdown is Kane number two with Chris Jericho number one. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I think Chris Jericho is the GOAT. But as far as debuts, I don't think it's even close Dude, that Kane had the best debut Kane, of all time. Yes. Kane's. The, the thing with Kane's was the buildup was so long. And just. For them to debut a character like that and to come out like so fucking monster heelish. Yeah. Like, come out, rip the door off. Yes. Face to face with the Undertaker. Yeah. He had those huge soles on his boots at the time. So he was like an inch or two taller than the Undertaker, but also just jacked through yeah. the chest. You're like, uh -huh. this guy is a monster. Yeah. This guy's a monster. Yeah. So yeah. They did wonders with that one. Yeah. And Chris Jericho's was awesome. It was good. It was good. It'll you kind of knew he was coming, though, so yeah. that... Yeah. Yeah. All right, what's number two over there? 
Number two is going to be Survivor Series 2016. Okay. Yeah. So this is our newest pay-per-view on the list. I will say, this th- that pay-per-view kind of brought me back into wrestling. Yeah. Because I was out for a long time. Yeah. And Dang. then I, I watched this. And that Survivor Series match was so good. It's known for Shane McMahon trying to do coast to coast and Roman Reigns jumping up and spearing his head yes. off. Yes. But that whole match was so good. Yeah. It really. And they then, all did a great job. On and that then the one. Goldberg cr- squash of Brock Lesnar at the end was just so out of left field. Yeah. Nobody saw that. Nobody coming. saw that. Nobody coming. did. Like you had a thought that maybe Goldberg would win, but you're like. Dude, Brock Lesnar. Yeah. They're, they're not going to let Brock They're not going to squash Brock no. Lesnar. No. They and did. God, how long did that match last? Like 30-something seconds or something? Something like that, yeah. That was it was ridiculous. over. Ridiculous. Yeah, if you went and take a piss, by the time you came back, it was over with. Yeah. So, what's another pay-per-view? We've got... Oh, yeah, this is one that I chose. Heat Wave 98. The ECW. ECW. Classic ECW. Now, I gotta say, I was never into ECW. I've kind of went back retroactively to see it. Mm -hmm. So I won't be mad if you guys pick that one. Because I wouldn't mind seeing it. I just know every time I watch old ECW, it's like... it's, It's just a different product. It's... It's outrageous. Yeah, yeah. I think... Honestly, for me, like, the main event for this one... If I'm recalling correctly, it was like the Dudleys against, like, Tommy Dreamer and somebody. But the main event wasn't even that good. The thing is, Masato Tanaka versus Mike Awesome, which Mm. I believe was, like, the opening fight, it was so damn good. It was just amazing. Then, like, Bam Bam Bigelow and Taz fought again... That was incredible. I mean, Shane Douglas was doing commentary for a lot of stuff. And Shane Douglas is actually a good commentator. He does a pretty damn good job. Especially when he's, like, not being filtered. Which they never did, so. I got a controversial take. Mm Mm-hmm. If WCW doesn't botch Mike Awesome the way they do, they might win the Monday Night War. If they give him top billing, put him in main event scene, instead of making him the fat chick thriller... Like, get that shit out. Mike Awesome could go. Dude, Mike Awesome was so underutilized in that fucking federation. He could go. He could. I've seen a, t- a fight against Tanaka. I don't know if it's that one or if it's another one, but it's unbelievable. Yeah, there was another one that like, they played a lot more. That was... Yeah. Yeah, anytime you put those two in the ring, though, yeah. Dude, Mike Awesome. I mean... Obviously so powerful, just yeah. gigantic. But then the agility off the top rope, over the top rope to the outside, yeah. and everything was just so stiff. Yeah. Like, it looked like they were actually trying to kill each other. Mm-hmm. The biggest problem with him was the guy could not cut a promo or nothing like that to save his life. He couldn't do it. He needs a manager. Yeah, he needed a manager. And, like, they put him in, you know, WCW, and not only are they trying to get him to cut promos, but then they gave him a fucking, like, talk show segment. Yeah. That seven was it seventies or was it the eighties? No, it was seventies. That seventies guy. guy. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, they had him like doing this talk show. And it's like you can't have a guy who already can't speak trying to do a talk show segment. You know who does talk shows? Chris Jericho. Yes. Yes. People who are gifted on the microphone. Yeah. People who can talk. Yeah. Paul Heyman. Yeah. No. Paul Heyman could cut a promo and have everybody subscribing to this show. Yeah. What's up, Paul? Yeah, Paul. You want cameo? Bro? What's I'm up, saying, bro? Doc. What's going on? Right. <laughs> so, the Pilsner's fine. I don't yeah. really drink beer, but it was fine. Yeah. But let's move on to Street Lamp Porter. It's uh, 5.4% alcohol. The Pilsner was 4.5, so. I'm doing horrible at getting that out. A little okay, stronger. There it goes. A little stronger. A little stronger. A little stronger. Hopefully, it's got a. You'll be able to see it as soon as we pour this out. It'll be a little darker. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is just soda. I'm saying, dude, I'm like, why'd that come out looking like straight up soda? I also can't pour a fucking beer. It just saved my life. Don't roast me in the comments. Or do. I don't care. Yeah, I'm saying, whatever. <laughs> Comment. Who don't care how you do it. Algorithm don't give a fuck what you say about us. I noticed on one of our older episodes, we did battle shots. But we used a porter 
Yeah. So on camera, you couldn't see the shot glass at all. The porter is too dark. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I noticed that too. Whenever I was like editing it down, yeah. I'm like, you can't even see the shot glass in this thing. Yeah, that's fine. That's all right though. It smells much better. It does. It's got a nice. Was that coffee? Oh. Yeah. I was gonna say, dude. It kind of does have like a coffee kind of. We know nothing about beer. I bet somebody in the comments like, oh, duh, all porters have coffee, you dumb shit. <laughs> right Sorry. now there's like going to be some connoisseur <laughs> who's just in there watching it foaming at the fucking mouth yeah. like, look at these guys. These idiots. Oh, my God. You don't even understand the robust. Why just shut up and let us take a drink? Cancel these dumb motherfuckers. Okay, yeah. All right. Okay. Mm. Now, this is bitter. But I like it so much more than the pills. Right. The funny thing is, after I don't know if it's just because we just said something about coffee or what, but yeah, I definitely got some coffee in yeah. there. Yeah. We need to do research. Do all porters have coffee? Do they? For Let real. us know in the comments. Maybe I'm a porter guy. I didn't even know. Educate us. Because <laughs> the coffee really tames down the hoppiness. It does. Yeah. So even though it's stronger, I prefer this much more than the pills there. That's, yeah, that's really good. That's nice. I'm saying. Yeah. All right, so what's, uh, what's the next pay-per-view? Next pay-per-view is going to be, ooh, Bash at the Beach 96. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. The Hollywood Hogan heel turn started the NWO. The leg drop heard around the world. You know, I got to say. One thing that always bugs me when I watch this footage mm -hmm. is Bobby Heenan spoiling the moment by saying, but which side is he on? I know, right? I'm like, why would you say that? Dude, I'm saying, like, that. I everybody, totally agree with that. Everybody thinks he's there to help Savage, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks that. Yeah. And then Heenan, but who, who's he fighting for? And now you're like, oh, wait, who is he fighting for? Yeah. If he would have not spoiled it, oh, it would have been huge. Yeah. I'm saying, like, that took it from, like, a 9... It took it from a 10 out of 10 to a 9 out of 10. Yeah. Just with that one line yeah. from Bobby. And I fucking love Bobby Heenan. Guy was great. But, yeah, that right there... Still an amazing moment, but... Yes. Just so much foreshadowing in that line. Yeah. I'm saying. They could have totally been... And the fans' reaction in that... Oh, just... Throwing. Like, that set <laughs> off a whole... I don't know if you'd call it a genre or what, but you know, like a whole thing of any time crowds would get upset at whatever was going on, they would just bombard the ring with trash. And yeah. you would see that over and over and over again whenever the NWO would come out in WCW. Dude, like, NWO. Early NWO was gold. Do you remember when uh, Kevin Nash launched Rey Mysterio into the fucking like, trailer yeah, outside? Yeah, just lawn yeah. darted him. <laughs> Dude. So good. Dude, when it was just a small group, yeah, it was amazing. And then it just kept growing. Now yeah. you got everybody in it. I'm now saying, you got two you different had... NWO factions. Right. It was yeah. like you turned around and it was like, who's in here now? Scott Norton? What the hell's going on here? Yeah. It's like you, had, you even had NWO Japan at one time, which was oh, apparently Scott, over there. It Scott was Norton was king of that one. Yeah. 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 So I remember he came back and he's, you know low tier in NWO but when he goes to Japan he's the man dude I'm saying him and uh, he was Ho who Hollywood was, Hogan <laughs> great, yeah great Muda and Masahiro Chono yeah those three over there when they went yeah they, they were like the fucking bullet club back in the day yeah for Japan yes the NWO set the standard for, for factions for all heel factions yes yeah. like obviously the four, four horsemen was great and people were trying to imitate that mm -hmm. but now nobody imitates that it's everybody's NWO yeah yeah, dude. Four Horsemen was amazing too. Yeah, can't yeah. ever forget that. I said nobody emulates it. I, I guess like Evolution. That yeah, was, that Evolution was, like was kind of like yeah. yeah. And isn't AEW doing something right now with Tully Blanchard leading a group that's almost supposed to be? Uh yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Hey, AEW's worth that though. If you guys don't watch that, I don't know what to tell you. That's fire. All right, so next we're looking at King of the Ring 98. This is infamous. It, it's a two-match pay-per-view. That's all. Yeah, I mean, really. <laughs> yeah, there are other matches yeah. on that card, but... 
let's be honest here. There's only two that we really yeah, focus you, on. You got an hour and a half of filler. Yeah. And then you get Undertaker, Mankind, Hell in a Cell, which is Highlight amazing. Highlight reels. Yeah. Out the ass. It's on the highlight one. reel forever. Yes. And then you follow it up with uh, Kane versus Stone Cold in the first blood match. Mm-hmm. And actually, the funny part about that match is, too, that is the first match where Kane debuted two full, like, yeah, sleeves. Yeah, he, he wore his other sleeve yes. for that match, yeah. Yeah, because any other time, he would have one arm, uh, like, you know, exposed and one arm covered. But this one... He wasn't taking no chances. Dude, I know Undertaker Mankind stole the show. Yeah. So I'm about to just do it even more. The craziest part of the Kane Stone Cold match is Undertaker Mankind just went through hell. And then they got to come out and interfere. Right. (laughs) Like, here's Mankind who has a fucking tooth that gets lodged, like, somewhere up in his lip or whatever, you know. It's like shooting out through his nose. This man's just gotten concussions. He's been... He doesn't even remember half the match until he yeah. ends up watching it at one point. And he's going to come out here and interfere in the main event. Yeah. Now, obviously, Mankind took the brunt of that, yeah. obviously. The Undertaker fought the whole match with a broken foot. So he had to climb up to the... I did not know that. Yeah. He had, a, he had a broken right foot. Climbed up the fucking cell and everything. Yeah. Had to jump down into the ring. <laughs> yeah. And then they both are able to come out there and interfere. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Dude, they were built different back then. Yeah. It's outrageous. Yeah. Like, the amount of... You would not see anybody go through that. First off, you're not going to see anybody go through the kind of shit nowadays that they went through back then. But also, on top of that, if they did manage to do something like that by accident, they're not coming out in the next match and fucking interfering or nothing. It's not it. They they haven't replicated that throw off the top of the cage since then, right? Like, you had Rikishi go into the fucking truck of sawdust or whatever. Whatever week They had that one was. with Kevin Owens. I believe it was Kevin Owens and somebody. I'm not sure who it was. Maybe it was him and Shane McMahon in a, in a Hell in a Cell. I, was like, I know Shane dropped the elbow. Mm-hmm. I do remember that one. But there was immediately so much padding under the table. Yeah, as I'm soon as they exploded, yeah, like, you just see it. one where, yeah, you could see they threw Kevin Owens off the top through the fucking thing. And there's just so much padding there. You're like, oh, God, no. Well, the underrated part of the Mankind one, to me, is that he does a front flip in the air. Mm-hmm. Everybody else just comes off flat, and they're mm-hmm. flat the entire way. Yeah. But he has to fucking tumble over yeah. to get into position. Yep. It's, it's crazy. All right, so we're looking at... That uh, one was just nuts. Hazy Hipster IPA. Hazy Hipster. So, I think I'm a porter man, but we can see how this IPA goes. Six point two alcohol percent alcohol by volume. There was another one that I was going to get to, but I decided against it because, first off, this one I know Sean doesn't Shit. like IPAs very much. I don't mind them. I think he's growing more tolerant of them yeah. now. Honestly, that Pilsner right there is the worst beer I've had in a while. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I said, it was fine for a Pilsner. Yeah. Pilsner's is not my thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, there was another one called Hipster Repellent that I started to get, but then I noticed, God like, the it. IPA part on there. This is foam. Wow. I know, I was going to say, I couldn't hit the side of the cup when I was pouring that. Yeah. All right, we're going to get torched in the comments for that. Yeah, right. Here. You're right. Look at that shit. Mine's 80% foam. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, I'm, I'm like 70, so. I was afraid of having, like, the dribble come down the side of the can, so yep. I didn't, yeah. Mm-hmm. Not, dude, yes. We're so good at this. I'm saying, if you cannot tell, we are beer connoisseurs. Professional beer drinkers, yeah. okay? Again, I think that's what makes our shit so uh, authentic. Yeah, I mean, if we like it, it's good beer. Yeah. Man. Well, while we wait for this foam to die down, what's the next <laughs> pay-per-view? <laughs> next pay-per-view after that is going to be... Um, Survivor Series 97. Okay. That was uh, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, the Montreal Screwjob. The Montreal screw job. Screw job. Yes. Started the entire Attitude Era. That introduced Mr. McMahon. Yeah. Before that, Vince McMahon. Just some commentator, you know. Yeah. Kind of guy. Most people like, didn't even know he owned the company. No, they didn't. They fucking thought it was Jack Tunney all the time. And, yeah, then... Then Survivor Series 97 happened, and suddenly Vince is thrust into the limelight as this fucking 
monster heel of a you know company owner or whatever and dude they milked that shit for everything it was worth I was gonna say I feel like Vince McMahon gets so much credit right yes for building the WWE and we are kind of talking about it earlier but honestly how many good ideas has he actually had I feel like the ratio is so far off not in favor of him yeah like we'll give him credit for the attitude era mhm and I I actually texted you this before Attitude Era is so short. Like, if you go from Montreal Screwjob to Stone Cold Heel Turn, it's like two and a half years. Yeah. That's it. And, you know, and this is something else. We have, we've even discussed this, too. Don't look at the wrestling aspect yeah. of the, the Attitude Era. Because it's not very good. No. And a matter of fact, there's a lot of horrible shit that went down in that Attitude Era. Like, the way, the, you know, just some of the stereotyping, the way women were treated, you know, that kind of stuff. We got a whole episode dedicated to it. Yeah. Go watch it if you have. Yeah, know. I'm saying, dude. We, we do not favor that very much now. Yeah. I mean, that single-handedly won the Monday Night Wars. Yeah. And now WWE's so big, it's just been coasting ever since. Yeah. So how many good ideas has Vince McMahon had? I mean, he bought up a lot of small local promotions so that's right. a good idea yeah and then mr mcmahon all right so this one um it's closer to the pilsner but it still smells better there's something about pilsner i just don't like man i'm gonna be honest with you right now this smells like weed i mean it's a hazy hipster <laughs> I yeah I, I, yeah this is a hazy hipster ipa it's certainly hazy this yeah yeah all right, let's see where okay. we're at. Let's see. Okay. Immediately better than the Pilsner. Yeah. I think I prefer the Porter. Okay. It's got a sourish kind of taste to it. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of dig it. I do too. The longer, yeah. Yeah, I kind of like it. So, oh, like I know you like the Porter more, but I think I'm gonna have to side with this one. Well, the longer this one goes, I might like this one more too. Yeah. It's very close for me. Yeah. So if I was ranking these a scale of 1 to 10, um, this one's lowest. Like I said, it's fine for a porter. I don't prefer porters, so I'm going to give this... He means Pilsner. Yeah, Pilsner. <laughs> don't prefer Pilsners, so I'm going to give this one a 3. I just don't like Pilsner. So in both of these, as a non-beer drinker, these are fine. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give both of these an 8. Yeah. They I, both, they're both good in their own different yeah, ways. They're very different. Yes, they're very different. You know. For an IPA, I, I dig it. Before we started this show, I, I would have just said beer is beer. But these two are so vastly superior <laughs> I heard to this. I say that multiple times. Too. Yeah. <laughs> these, are t these two are so much better than this one. Yeah. And they're so different but still good. I'm becoming a new man from this show. I've learned a lot. We still don't know all the nuances to describe this stuff, but... No. Whatever. That's fine. Yeah, I like that. All right, what's our next pay-per-view? Our next pay-per-view is going to be Money in the Bank 2014. It's classic. Classic. John I, Cena, CM Punk. Say, I know nothing about this pay-per-view. But I still go back and watch this. I'll go back and watch this match on YouTube. Yeah. Because, I don't know, it's the closest to a legitimate big fight feel mm -hmm. I've seen, at least since the Attitude Era, but maybe even including the Attitude Era, because it felt it felt real, because it was in Chicago. I was going to say, it was in Chicago, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, now, it felt... Correct me if I'm wrong, but was this during the Summer of Punk? Yeah. Was this before or after he did the the, the uh, pipe bomb? Miss pipe bomb. Oh, I can't tell you that. I can't remember. I didn't really follow WWE that close at that time. I wasn't the biggest into them. Like I've, yeah, I remember like the pipe bomb interview was when I really first like took notice again of like yeah. WWE. Like oh, yeah, that was oh sick. shit, that was sick. Yeah, it was. And this I mean, match is sick. Yeah. Cena versus Punk. Cena versus Punk was the, huge. The hype around it. Mm -hmm. um, I've watched it multiple times. At least four or five times. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure John Cena actually gets hurt. 
in yeah. the match. There's a spot where um, CM Punk comes off the top rope for a crossbody and lands low. So John Cena kind of catches him around his knees. And he immediately grabs his knee and rolls out. Keeps his leg straight. and he's, He looks frustrated. But he never really recovers. You know, like when it's a, a work, they'll kind of forget about it and recover. But he never fully recovers. So right. I think he actually got hurt during the match and was still able to finish. So that's impressive. I think the last... I think prior to this, the last match that I remember that had that feel to it, do you remember the ECW One Night Stand where Rob Van Dam won the world title? I think it was off of John Cena. Off of John Cena, yeah. Yeah. Like, that was the last time where, like, there was so much energy around it. And the fact that they had it at the Hammerstein Ballroom. You know, I haven't watched it. I should, though. I know what you're talking about, but I've never actually watched the match in full. I'm guilty, too, of that. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> but... I know what you're talking I've about, seen, though. Yeah, I've like, seen highlights. So many stuff, like yeah. highlights of it, and I've read so much about it and things. Yeah, that it's like, oh my god, dude, that. Yeah, I should probably go back and watch that too. All right, so what's next, Joe? What is next, Sean? Let's see. Oh, now we're gonna get into some of the shittier choices. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> everything before this was classic. Yeah, everything we chose these based on like. You know the classic aspect of it, or this has a great match, or this era, and this this yeah. is so poignant. This is why we want to watch this one. The next three are classically bad, horrible, and they're all from WCW. If that tells you anything, from a specific era too. Yeah, from when it was just winding down. Yes. So her first one up is WCW's New Blood Rising. Okay, so this is a fun fact. <laughs> So, uh, Vince Russo came in, and he made an announcement that all storylines were starting fresh right now. Nothing that ever happened before this point in time matters. Yep. Everything starts fresh right yep. now. Yep. And then it was almost like a, if you're familiar with the older TNA storylines, mm -hmm. where it was, um, you had your older guys at the top of the card, younger guys didn't like it, so they created a stable to fight back Yep. called The New Blood. The New Blood. So at the beginning of the year, they announced this pay-per-view, New Blood Rising. And by the time the pay-per-view came around, the New Blood <laughs> stable was no longer around. Yeah. So that's a thing. I mean, so that's just fucking recipe for failure right yeah. there. That's superior long-term booking right there. Do we remember any of the matches on the New Blood Rising pay-per-view? I don't. And the thing is, I think I just watched a review of that not just, long ago, and I still don't remember any of the matches from it. Everything it was, just, was just so uninspired. Yeah. I feel like, every, like everything was just thrown together at the last minute. Every WCW pay-per-view was the same. Yeah. You would have, early on, you would have a tag team match or a cruiserweight match mm -hmm. that would steal the show. Yeah. Because they were amazing. Yeah. WCW and their, and their cruiserweight division. Yeah. That was like the one thing that their legacy is going to be built on, really. And then the rest of the pay-per-view is all storylines that don't make any freaking sense. No. Wrestlers that don't even really want to be there. No. Nope. And old dudes that can no longer work. Yeah. So you went That's from like this true. high. And then it's just like, oh. Yeah. It's like as, you know, with most pay-per-views, it's going to start off like here. And it's going to build. And it's going to build up until the main event. And you're just like so amped for this main event that you're like on level 10. With the later WCW shows... It was like you were starting up here and you were just coasting down. Yeah. Like, oh, great, we're at the main event. Well, who's in the main event? I don't know. It's Hogan and Jeff Nash, Jarrett or something. Nash, Hogan, Nash. Paul. Yeah, bro. Nash and Sid Vicious. One of the outsiders are yeah. fighting some other old you know what I'm dude. Saying, dude. They like, had beef over in WWE 10 years ago. Yeah. You know, something like that. It's like, we got the No Limit Soldiers against, you know, the. West Texas Rednecks or some <laughs> shit. Yeah, Mike Awesome versus ICP. Yeah, I in mean. a bus match. <laughs> what? What's that? David Arquette's our world champion. Run with it, goddamn. Perfect. It. Run Perfect. With it. We're gonna do a three stages of a cage match. It's gonna turn out horribly. Dude, I remember actually watching that and being stoked for that three stage cage, and then watching it and being like. Is this <laughs> yeah what is this but all right so what we got next joe the next one's going to be wcw greed greed which was actually the last pay-per-view they ever held i feel like uh 
was that Scott Steiner on the promo? Yeah. Just front and center. Front and center with that ridiculous yeah. bicep on bicep kind of thing. Scott Steiner was all natural, right? <laughs> yeah, I never seen anybody with a bicep peak like Scott Steiner. Has. Dude, like, I'm saying like his muscles had muscles. It looked like somebody cut his skin open, stuck a baseball on top of his bicep, right? Because it's like this was still skinny, and it was just yeah. like. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> what is that? That doesn't even look natural. Doesn't look cool. Diner no, looks no. ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Big booty daddy. Dude. You remember that damn thing he would wear over his head? His little chain, like chain, mesh chain metal shit. shit. Yeah. yeah. And uh, everything was sexual. Everything. Everything. Yes. Where Where are my freaks at? Yeah, holla if you hear holla me. if you hear me. It's yeah. like, dude. Okay. We, Every we get it. Dude. Okay, you pull tail. I loved Scott Steiner back in the day when he was with Rick. Dude. Like that that Scott Steiner was epic, dude. The the what is it, the Hurricane Ronda that they did or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, I forgot what the name of it was. See I feel like Scott Steiner peaked. And then stuck around for so long. Yeah. So if you can't tell, we know nothing about WCW Greed. I have no idea what happens. I just know it's the last one. Yeah. I assume it's terrible. Yeah. So I'm, you, I'm going out on a limb here and saying that it sucked balls. Yeah. So if you want us to watch a terrible, terrible pay-per-view, that would be the one. That would be it. So the last one. WCW Bash at the Beach 2000. So. We do know stuff about this one. Yeah. So that is, what, Jeff Jarrett versus Hogan? Jeff Jarrett versus Hogan for the title. Where Jeff Jarrett comes out and just lays down in the middle of the ring. Then Hogan gets up, grabs a mic, and says, this is why this company's going to shit, or whatever yeah. he says. Yeah, that's why this company's going to shit, or then such shit, or whatever. Yeah, and then Vince yep. Russo comes out. Mm-hmm. Cuts a promo about how Hulk Hogan's selfish and egotistical. Mm-hmm. Hulk Hogan didn't know he was going to cut the promo. Sees it when he lands in Miami with Eric Bischoff. Because apparently they left before the pay-per-view was over to fly to Miami. Because he's definitely not selfish and egotistic. Not at all. <laughs> but gets so mad he quits. Never comes yeah. back. That's his the last match. The best thing to come out of that pay-per-view was Booker T winning the world title in like the second world title match or whatever that they booked at the yeah. end of the night. That was it. That was really the only good thing that I can think of that came out of that. Everything else... It was like the biggest clusterfuck thrown together ever. It's like a bunch of people just sat down in a room and were like, what do you got? I don't know. All right, let's run with that. Yeah, that's a mess. That shit was such a horrible shit show. It makes our production quality look great. Dude, it's like... I don't know. I don't even know what to say. I almost get what they were going for, but they Mm -hmm. just didn't get it. No. The execution was terrible. Execution was horrible on that thing. But, all right, that's the 10 pay-per-views. So, I guess we'll just comment each one, whichever gets the most likes. Yeah. We'll win. Yeah. So, we yeah. create a poll on Facebook. You choose which one you want. And by Saturday, let's say Saturday afternoon. I haven't set a specific time yet. We'll get to that, but... Whichever one wins, come Sunday when we get together again to record, we're going to review that one, and we'll do a rundown on the official rules of like the drinking game of it and everything. And let's go ahead and let you know now the chances of you actually seeing the pay per view is slim to fucking none. There's a lot of restrictions around that, so the camera will just be focused on us. You'll hear the music, or the sound, or whatever in the background. You'll just see our reactions to it and listen to us talk about it. No. Yeah. About it. Should be fun. Should be. All right. We'll see you next week.